Have you ever had something happen that's so wild, so unimaginable, that you think just for a second you might be dreaming? Well, I just did, and I still can't really believe it's happening, and that I'm going to be flying over 2,000 miles away because of it. It was a Wednesday, April 26th. I just finished writing a long art history paper. I biked back to my dorm room and I was getting ready to take a well-deserved break after a long day of school and then, ah, uh, it was probably just my parents checking in on me to see how classes were going. But no, it wasn't my parents. Hey dude, let me know if you'd be interested in coming out to the new studio and making something cool. Peter, who goes by the artist name Ten Hundred, has been one of my favorite YouTubers and artists for years now. He paints murals, makes elaborate illustrations, and he's created his own colorful universe full of characters and motifs. It was the winter of 2022 when I had the idea. I wanted to collaborate with him. Over the following six months, I carved a sculpture of one of his characters with the hopes that he would want to paint it. I knew it was a long shot, but the stars aligned and the unimaginable happened. Little did I know, that was only the beginning. Ten Hundred wanted me to make something awesome for his studio, so I needed to think of a good idea, something that would become part of his studio. This wall of pictures here, I used to take a picture of everyone that came by the studio and stick it on the wall. It's like a physical Facebook, like no matter who comes by the studio, they're like, oh, I know that guy. A photo wall would be perfect for Peter's studio, but he needed something more than just a photo wall. What if I made an entire photo booth for taking these Polaroids? After hours of sketching and 3D modeling, I had planned out as much as I could, and the time had finally arrived to fly to Michigan. Okay, I just grab my bag. Come on, little nugget. Okay, we've made it to 1000 Studio, yeah. the promised land. It's so crazy to be here in real life. We're gonna get started on the photo booth. We're about to make history with make with miles it's gonna be sick so this is what we got wood wise got a lot <laughs> yes that's wood very good i think it's uh, fibrous what do you need man? we need uh probably to start off with just two by fours <laughs> as you saw in the beginning i created a 3d model but i was also able to create a set of plans which tells me how much wood i'm going to need and this is going to be really helpful gnome deeps we could do like lower quality for the inside. Yeah. If we're just painting, I think this yeah. stuff will probably we can sand work. It and... I got the cart. Now we can load up the wood in the words of Bobby Duke. So Miles is the man with the master plan. I'm totally just following his lead. I believe I'm gonna be doing a little bit of custom painting on this photo booth. We're just strong like that. We can get yeah. two at once. Beast mode. There we are. This is gonna be a heavy photo booth, ladies and gentlemen. I volunteer Nick as tribute for the heavy pieces. With all the wood secured, it was finally time to start cutting. This project is on a completely different scale than my normal builds. I'm basically building a very small, simple house, which means I needed a lot of 2x4s for the framing. I finally finished cutting all the pieces out. Now it's time to start framing it up. I will say this is a lot different than my usual projects because I don't have to be as precise, which is kind of nice. After sorting all the pieces into different piles by length, it was time for me to frame a wall for the first time. Yeah. Might be a little too powerful. Yeah. Put this on one instead of two. Once Peter had taught me how to use the framing nailer, I got on a roll and the wall started coming together quickly. During the first few days of this project, Peter was nonstop editing because he had a looming video deadline. 
So we were both racing against time with our own different projects. Time to make the sidewalls now. Now you saw just how much timber I cut for the framing. And that doesn't include the roof or the siding. So you can probably imagine just how heavy this is going to be. Just finished framing up all the walls. I think it went pretty smoothly for my first time. Big shout out to Peter though for teaching me how to use the nail gun. That thing is awesome. Not only does the base of this photo booth need to support its own weight, but it also needs to be strong enough for multiple people to stand inside of it. So I got to work adding some 3 quarter inch plywood floors. A couple of slightly sketchy cuts later, I was ready to screw the plywood flooring to the 2x4 frame that together will form the base of this photo booth. Okay, so the one thing I requested from Miles is that we'd be able to move his photo booth with this pallet jack. Oh yeah, oh, nice. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna put the pallet jack As I finished screwing on those four by four beams to the bottom, I realized just how heavy it was already getting. Boom. Good morning, Miles. Morning. Start of day two. Time to put up the walls. We're gonna use the big boy clamps. We have it lifted up on the pallet jack. We're gonna start off with the side walls, nail it in place, and then put on the back wall. All right, wall two is going on. Gotta get it lined up perfectly here. Now the real test is gonna be if the back wall actually fits. It'll fit. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Solid. Okay, it's time to put the front wall in. Let's get started. <laughs> now we can drive it anywhere we want. Fantastic. And now this is the most satisfying part. Mmm, the drop. Drop? Time to climb the ladder. It looks like it fits. So at this point, we have the roof on, all the framing is done. Now it's time to grab some plywood and do the inside sheeting. It is a little bit shaky right now, but once we add the plywood, that's gonna tighten things up quite a bit. I'm thinking that we put like a bench right here and then have the camera kind of like at eye level. Mm -hmm. It's probably only enough room for like one person. No, there's room for it. I guess there's, yeah. There's photo one. booths, dude, photo booths, like They're so many. Tiny. This is like bigger than a photo booth, I feel like. Three or four people cram inside of them. That's part of the fun of it. Well, it turns out my design was a little bit bigger than I expected, but not to worry. That just means it'll be a little bit more spacious inside. Okay, that fits. When I was nailing on these first few pieces of plywood, the entire structure was pretty wobbly, and it would be safe to say that I was a little bit worried about the structural integrity, mainly because I've never done this before. Last wall is going in. As I finished off the inside by adding the fourth and final wall, the racking of the building seemed to disappear and my confidence was once again restored. Finally done with the walls. All right guys, end of day two. I didn't get quite as much done as I was hoping. I am pretty happy with how the interior siding went. It definitely took a lot of time because I've never done anything like this before. Beginning of today, this structure wasn't even standing, so I would consider that a win. So the game plan for tomorrow is to frame out the roof. And I have the roof design pretty dialed in in the computer, but I don't have a really easy way to transfer that into real life. It's so sick being in 1000 studio, just seeing his process, going out doing groceries with him, playing ping pong. I think that's a wrap for day two. See you guys tomorrow. 
As day three rolled around, I was moving much slower, and the excitement of framing the walls quickly dissipated as I now faced the challenge of making the roof trusses. As I struggled to tile the printed templates I designed, I got a taste of some blustery Michigan weather. Something about the dark rainy day seemed to slow my pace even further, and two hours later, I was finally done with my paper templates. I've got all my pieces. I've got the big, I've got the middle, and I've got the little. And if I combine all of these together, I should have a pretty cool looking roof design. Uh, Nick Garber here. I am a 10 hundreds uh, assistant editor, production assistant. But I just have one thing to say to you. If you're not subscribed to Make With Miles, then like and subscribe, okay? I've been watching Maker YouTube since I was 12 years old, so you would have been like four. This kid's a badass, all right? I don't, I, I, there's not a lot of cursing in your videos. You're gonna have to do a lot of editing to clean this audio up, but also subscribe to 10 hundred, that'd be cool, cause like he's my boss and you know, if he's doing well, then I'm doing well, so. If you think um, I should make a YouTube channel, comment, like, subscribe, I struggled for a while trying to find a way to fasten the trusses to the top of the structure, but I finally figured that if I screwed some scrap 2x4 to the plywood, I could use it as a sort of angle bracket to screw the trusses on with. As I added the last piece, the end of day 3 drew to a close. It has been a very long day, climbing up and down the scaffolding. I feel like Michelangelo. Honestly, I think the roof structure was the hardest part to build, and we're almost done with that. I'm very much so looking forward to tomorrow because that's when this thing is gonna start looking really interesting. Day four, guys, I'm super pumped because today I get to start doing the wavy pattern. I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I have three days left. My goal for today is to get all the roof panels attached and maybe if I have time, start on the siding. I'm pretty tired, didn't go to bed until like 1.30 last night, which is probably like what Miles did as well. I don't know, apparently they've been here till like midnight every night. Okay, ready, ready, I'm gonna snap, and then it's gonna be Miles working on this thing. Oh, faked you out. The start of day four not only brought more favorable weather, but also feelings of excitement as I ventured into the meat and potatoes of this project. The funny thing is that none of what I've built up until this point will be visible in the final result, which has been a bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I haven't had to be too concerned about precision or cleanliness, which meant I could move at a quicker pace. But now that the entire visible part of this build lies ahead of me, I needed to pay closer attention to making things look good. If you've seen any of my past videos, you'll know that I'm a fairly detail-oriented person, and often to a level of perfectionism, which can be hard at times. Seeing as I only had three more full days to finish this project, I was going to need to go against my nature and let go of my perfectionism, otherwise there was no chance I was going to finish this project. Today was kind of crazy. My goal for today was to get the roof completely done, but that didn't happen. I still have the entirety of the back side of the roof and about a quarter of the rest of the sides. Even though it's a slow process, I am vibing with the roof big time. It looks like a pine cone and I like pine cones, so. Okay, here's the game plan for tomorrow. Finish the roof in the morning, go to town with the wood filler and do a bunch of sanding, if I'm being realistic, I think I can finish the roof tomorrow and maybe get a quarter or half the way done with the siding. That might be a little bit optimistic, but I guess we'll see tomorrow. All throughout the roofing process, both Nick and Nikki were helping me out by cutting out additional curved strips of the quarter inch plywood. And this really sped things up considerably. Okay, I'm almost done with the roof, but I'm gonna take a break right now so that Peter and I can figure out the background that's gonna be inside of the photo booth. Okay, the past few days I have been editing like a madman, trying to get my video done, but I have completed that and I finally get to help Miles, get to hang out. And the first thing that I wanna do is start working on some art backdrops. This is a photo booth 
We want some cool backdrops and I'm gonna make at least one painting that's gonna sit behind you when you get your photo taken. If there's time, maybe I'll make more. But I'm so happy to not be editing right now and just freaking be able to play around with lumber and have fun. Yeah, let's cut some wood. Time to make something. Time to make some. As Peter got started painting his backdrops, I had a problem I needed to solve. So you've probably been wondering what I'm gonna do with the underside of the roof because it looks kinda gnarly. What the heck? You can see a ton of stray nails and screws poking out from when I was attaching the top, and that is not gonna fly, so I need to cover up the underside of the roof. Holy shit, so close to my finger. I added these fascia boards with a little pin nailer, and I also covered the eaves of the roof with some thin Luan plywood. As the night wore on, I put the last few nails into the roof, and Peter decided to paint the interior. Okay, it's end of day five. We still have a lot to do. I got the roof done. I filled all the gaps on the roof. Peter painted the inside, and I think it looks really good. The game plan for tomorrow is to get the siding up, paint the roof, and do whatever else we can. I still have to put a panel up here, but I can't do that until tomorrow because all of the wood got wet in a little impromptu rainstorm, so I need to wait for it to dry. I feel like it's totally possible to get this completely done before I fly out on Monday, but it's gonna be a super tight schedule. I'm gonna have to grind. Thankfully, Austin from Redbud Builds is coming over to help. My name's Austin. My channel is Redbud Builds and so far I've been making a lot of stuff out of logs. I'll find a fallen tree and just come up with interesting ideas and try and build stuff that no one's ever seen before. I've been watching Austin's videos for a while now and I really like them because he always has an unconventional way of using wood. Definitely go subscribe to his channel and give his videos a watch. Austin got straight to work with his router and flush trimmed the oversized Luan on the eaves. Meanwhile, I got to work adding the first strip of siding around the base of the photo booth. Austin proved to be a sort of secret weapon on this project. Very impressive. And I'm very grateful he spent so much time working with me. I honestly don't know what this project would have looked like if it had not been for his help. Okay, the time has come to paint the roof. We decided it would be best to paint the roof before putting on the siding so that we don't have to do a ton of masking when we're painting the actual building itself. Peter picked up this big bucket of primer, so I'm gonna prime the roof first. Then I think Peter's gonna go to town with some orange spray paint and do a bit of a gradient. The reality of how much time I had left had finally started to sink in more than ever. It's time to move this thing. Now there is one crucial element that I failed to consider, the height of the doorway. I'm getting better here. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. I feel so powerful right now. Oh my gosh, this always freaks me out. Oh. Uh, woo! It's like a centimeter from the roof. Oh my no god! Way. There's like no room. That was insane. <laughs> that if I made it any taller, it yeah. would have just not worked. Time had come to hand things over to 1000 and let him do his thing. Got because the design of the roof has all those overhangs, it made it nearly impossible to spray underneath. As Peter captained his lift and used can after can of spray paint, the wind had picked up, fighting against him and blowing the spray paint back into his face, making this gradient all the more difficult to paint. Super frustrating. It's like one of the most difficult things. What I should have had is like a helicopter with like a harness where I could like yeah. dangle above it. <laughs> yeah. All right. If I'm being completely honest, yesterday I was not feeling great about this project. 
And I was already starting to feel disappointed in myself for failing. And I think that's super unreasonable because the project's not done and I haven't even flown out yet. I think I was just being hard on myself because today we made a lot more progress and I'm starting to feel like it's actually possible to finish this thing. This is physically the biggest project that I've made. We're gonna get this done. Gotta get back to work. Even though 10 o'clock had come and gone, it was Saturday night and I still hadn't done any of the siding. I knew that if this project had any chance of getting done before I flew back home on Monday, I needed to finish the siding before Sunday rolled around. So with the help of Austin, we got to cladding this tiny building. My process consisted of nailing a piece of the siding to the front of the photo booth and scribing the angle on the side piece, so the two pieces met together perfectly at the corner. This siding process was very similar to the roof, but much easier because each piece didn't have to be custom made. I'm about to put on the very last piece of siding. It is currently 1.29 a.m. You gotta do what you gotta do to get the project done. The even crazier thing though is that at the beginning of today, all we had was a framed out box with a roof that wasn't even painted. Also, the roof looks absolutely sick. Peter really killed the grading on that. I think the orange was the perfect choice. It looks pretty cool to me. We out here, day seven. I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit nervous when I was just working on the roof. I had zero siding done and the roof looked a little bit janky with all the nail holes and screw holes. But once we painted this thing, I really started liking how it was looking. Went to bed at like 3 a.m. last night and woke up at eight. So this is our final day. I leave tomorrow and we gotta get this thing buttoned up. All right, gotta get to work. Time to send the plywood. Make it real smooth. Getting out the white paint. Cry, cry, cry. Let us fold our booth. Yeah. Dip it in the paint and let it glide. Then repeat a hundred more times. Then we take a break for two hours. When we're back, we'll see that it's dry. Okay, the moment has finally arrived to paint this yes. thing. We're both very tired. Very tired, very tired. We've been burning the candle at both ends a little bit. We're gonna do, what colors are we gonna do, Peter? All kinds of grays. I think the cool gray is gonna look really good and contrast nicely with the orange. Uh, it's actually gonna be like more of a neutral gray because I don't have any oh, cool okay. grays. I just found It's out. still gonna look sick. <laughs> yeah. it's, okay. it's cool gray, it's not cool gray. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be cool. It's cool, but not like. But it's not cool like bluish. You guys really needed to know that. Thanks for watching this part, audience. Also, <laughs> we spent like an hour trying to tape this thing up and mask it. Mm. Hopefully nothing, nothing makes leaks. it through. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's pray. Let's do it. The gradient used so much spray paint that Peter barely had enough left to finish it off. But as he sprayed those last few shades of gray, I could really see Peter's color scheme for this photo booth coming to life. Okay, so we're gonna do a little test with the LEDs. This is my first time plugging them in. Dude. Soldering it is. Okay, now I just gotta do that 16 more times. I wanna thank my industrial maker for helping me decide which LEDs to use for this build. I think I ended up using over 100 feet of LEDs. Okay, I finished soldering all the wires. Hopefully it'll turn on. I have everything connected to the Alexa power strip, which we haven't tested out yet. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Oh wait, okay, if I press this button, everything should turn on. This is like take three right here. Are we good? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Okay, so Peter did a test with the Polaroids while I was working on the soldering. 
He set up the lights temporarily and took a photo, and now we're gonna take a look at it. Oh yeah, that's good lighting. That does look good. Dude, that's really good lighting for a Polaroid. We'll just write light test one. Is it July? Kind of the first photo, but it's not the first official one because like it's not all set up yet, but that's awesome. This last night, we stayed at the studio until past three o'clock, adding all the final details. And we figured out the optimal camera height so I could install a shelf for the camera. Peter's backdrops turned out incredible, and you should definitely go check out Peter's latest studio build out video if you want to see his side of this story. It's time to see if this is going to fit. Austin put some French cleats on here, so it should be able to hang and be removable easily. Okay. Nice. Feels dang good. All right, Miles, your turn, dude. Yeah, yeah. Guys, it's finally done. After about a week of solid teamwork, many late nights later, we have the photo booth fully done. Good job, bro. It's this awesome. This was a fun project. It's so awesome. I'm so honored to be able to come to the studio and just hang out and build this. You're welcome anytime, right. as long as you build me something <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's it's great, man. It's so epic. It's like one of the coolest things in the studio, for sure. Besides Nick, of course. Yeah, Nick is definitely <laughs> the coolest. And, it's something that lets you like capture memories and like people and friends are like the best thing about this place, hopefully. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's so good. cool. Awesome. Yeah. High five, bro. I'm gonna take some more photos. I'll see you guys yeah. later. Sometimes the unimaginable does happen and you realize you're not dreaming after all. So thank you, Peter, for having me out to your studio and make sure to go check out Peter's video and subscribe to him if you aren't already.